All right, so for this game, we have what is effectively a many-to-many -many grouping game. Um, well, what I mean with that, for the record, is that, I mean, we have a bunch of people, six campers, and we have a bunch of items, specifically three of them. Um, but what happens here is that each camper could potentially purchase several, or in other words, many items. And likewise, each of the items can be purchased by several or many people. Now, because of that, um, you could arguably group this either by the campers or by the items. Both are very much reasonable approaches. Um, we don't have any spacing information given to us in the original setup, so you know that's not really something that we can uh, rely on here. So you could very reasonably go either way, and you'd probably be absolutely fine. Now, it's a bit of an arbitrary decision, but personally, I kind of feel more comfortable with a smaller number of groups, so I'm gonna set it up based on the items in this case. So we have, the items are R, S, and T, so we'll set that up accordingly. Um, the elements themselves are G, H, J, K, L, M. And I guess from there, let's take a look at the rules. So the first rule tells us that J and exactly two other campers are going to purchase rucksacks. Um, so that's actually a pretty powerful rule because essentially it means that, I mean, we can say J plus two are going to be doing the rucksacks. Um, but that gives us an exact spacing count for the rucksacks. So that's exactly three people. There's gonna be no more there, J and exactly two others. Um, so that's pretty good. Next, K has to go into a stove and a tent. So K is gonna do stove, tent, um, and we can reserve K into both of those. Next, H does not do anything that K does. Now for the record, it does tell us that each of the people has to purchase something, except if K, if K is getting both a stove and a tent, and according to the third rule, H and K cannot be the same, that means that H can't buy a stove or a tent, so H is gonna have to go into the rucksack group. So that's, that's pretty good. Next, J purchases at least one sort of item that H does not. So, well, the thing is, we know exactly what's going to happen to H. H only goes here and does not go into S or T. So if we're told that J purchases at least something that H doesn't, that just means that J has to buy at least one of S or T. So we can kind of simplify this rule. We can say that J simply has to be one of S or T, um, and we can clarify minimum. We could have both, potentially. Um, so that's kind of nice. We know J is going to be in one of these two groups for sure, if not both. Lastly, M has to purchase more stuff than J, so we have to have more Ms than Js, except wait a minute, we we have two Js on the board. So if we have to have two Js, then that means that we're gonna have to have three Ms, so that's pretty nice. In fact, wait a minute, that also means that we can't have three Js anymore. J cannot really do both S and T because M has to do more than J, so if J had three things, then that would break the rule. So there's only one more J. Um, it's not really a minimum, it's exactly one of S and T. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, for the record, let's just kind of do a bit of a tally. What have we already taken care of? Because um, K is effectively done, right? Because we can't have any more Ks. So K is effectively complete. Um, M is complete since, well, we have M's everywhere. H is complete because H is not allowed to go anywhere else. So I guess the only things that we're not sure about are G, J, and L. Um, now J we know is gonna do one of S or T, that's just, um, that's the only flexibility there. And then G and L, they're gonna go into S or T or both potentially. There's not really any restrictions on them. All right, cool, let's go, the questions themselves. Question number seven, for how many of the campers is it possible to determine exactly what they purchase? And I suppose I just answered that question, didn't I? Um, the best answer to question number seven is three, um, or in other words, answer choice C. Um, H, K, and M are locked in place. The other three we're still a little bit um, unsure about. Next, question number eight. If L is the only camper to purchase a stove and nothing else, so, Okay, so there's quite a bit, there's a bit to unpack there. So, I mean, we can bring down everything we know, but according to this rule, L is going to purchase a stove, but nothing else, right? So L is done. And on top of that, he is the only camper 
to purchase a stove and nothing else, which effectively means that G, G cannot just go to S. And because, as we said, R is done, that means that G will have to get a tent for sure. Um, now, for the record, G could still get a stove. The only thing we know is that L cannot be, nobody else will only get a stove, but other people could get a stove, and G could get a stove as long as G does not only get a stove. So we definitely know that G gets a tent, um, but he could also pick up the stove as well. And then J could still go either way. Um, since Jay's already doing the rucksack, um, there's no possibility of J only getting the stove. So to the question, what could be the exact number of stoves and tents that they purchase? Well, at the very least, we know that there's going to be three stoves and at least three tents, right? So we can get rid of anything that's less than that. So A and B are easy disqualifiers. Um, answer choice D is, yeah, you can't have just two tents. So really, it's just down to answer choices C and E. Can we have four stoves and three tents or and or can we have three stoves and three tents? Except wait, no, three and three wouldn't work because J still has to show up somewhere among these two. We don't know exactly where he's going to go, but you can't have exactly three stoves and exactly three tents because then J wouldn't be doing one of them. So answer choice E would not work. The best answer here becomes C. We could have had four stoves and three tents. Next question number nine. Each of the following could be a pair of campers who purchase none of the same sorts of items as each other except. So we're looking for two people that could be completely separate. Well, I guess who cannot be completely separate. So answer choice A, could H and L be completely separate? Um, and yeah, in fact, they would have to be because there's no more H's on the board. This is the only H and he's certainly not with L. Um, so they could have been completely separate. Answer choice B, G and J. Could G and J be completely separate? And yeah, so we could have had, um, say, J over here. We have to have another J, but then G could just go into the tent, and that could have still worked. So um, they could have been completely separate. Next, G and K. And no, there's our answer. There's no way for G and K to be completely separate because G is going to have to go into one of these two, and K is already in both. So the best answer to question number nine is, again, suspiciously, C. Next, question number 10. If G does not purchase any sort of item that L purchases, so essentially, if G and L are not doing the same thing, um, well, all that really means now is that essentially G and L are just going to split between S and T, and J is just going to join one or the other side. Um, we could lay out a scenario, but I feel like that's, we can probably do this mentally. We just know that G and L are just going to split and that's that's going to be it. The question is, what could be false? For the record, if we're looking for one answer choice that could be false, that means that the other answer choices are going to be things that would have had to be true. Answer choice A, J does not purchase anything that L does. Now, could that be false? Essentially, that J and L are separate. I guess let's go the other way. Did it have to be true that J and L are separate? And arguably, no. I mean, we know that L would have gone into one of these two positions, but J could have gone with him, right? We could have had, let's say, J and L over here and then G over there. So J and L could have been together. So it doesn't have to be true that they are separate. It could be false that they are separate. Answer choice A is, is a viable answer choice. Let's take a quick look at the other ones. Answer choice B. G purchases exactly one sort of item that K does. And yeah, if we have, if G and L are separate, that means that um, there's just going to be one of each. One of these will be a G and then the other one's going to be an L or vice versa. But that means that if there's only one G, then G will purchase exactly one thing that K also does. So this couldn't be false. It had to be true. Answer choice B is out. Next, no more than four stoves are purchased. Would that have had to be true? And actually, yeah, because at best, we would have had G or L here and a J, but that means, and that's really it, that's all we could have had there. So it would be true that we would have no more than four stoves. Answer choice C, had to be true. This could not have been false. D, no more than four tents. The same thing really applies to the tents. We could have had one of G or L and a J there, but that's it. So it had to be true that we had no more than four tents. So that couldn't possibly be false. Answer choice E, 
exactly three campers purchase exactly one item each. Does that have to be true that exactly three people do just one thing? Actually, I suppose it does because H would have had always has to do just one thing. In this scenario, if G and L are separated, then G and L each do exactly one thing. And then everybody else is more than one, right? Because J has to go twice and M has to go three times and K goes twice. So there would be exactly and only three people who are purchasing just one item. So that has to be true. That could not have been false. The best answer choice to question number 10 is A. Lastly, question 11. Which of the following is a pair of campers who must purchase the same number of items as each other? So we're looking for two people that are gonna have to buy the same number of things. Let's go. Answer choice A, G and H. Now we know H is stuck with just one, but we could have potentially had G in both S and T. So that didn't have to be true that they buy the same stuff as each other. Um, A is out. No, answer choice B, G and J. Do G and J have to buy the same number of things? And again, no, J has to buy two, but G could have just bought one. G didn't have to buy two, so they don't have to buy the same number. Answer choice C, G and L. And again, no, um, we know that we'll have to have one of G or L among S or T, but there could have been two of G, for example, and just one of L, like we had in this scenario, there was just one L, but we could have had two Gs, or the other way, we could have had two Ls and just one G. This, they don't have to have the same number as each other. Answer choice D, J and K. Oh, there it is, that works. So we know that there's exactly two Ks and there's no more because there's no Ks over here. And we know that there's exactly two Js. We have to have a J here and in one of these two. So there would have to be, um, J and K would have to buy the same number as each other. The best answer to question 11 is D. For the record, just in case, answer choice E, K and L, do they have to buy the same number? And no, there could just be one L, like there was here, but two Ks. So that didn't have to be the case. Once again, best answer is D.